If you are watching this video, that means you want some extra credit. So I'm going to show you how to get some extra credit on this next test. Previously, when we've been factoring, it's been relatively simple because we just see that first term as x squared. But now what happens when you see a number in front of x squared? What happens when you see a 2x squared or a 5x squared or any number x squared? That's what we're going to show you in this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remind you about how to multiply. Remember, we're just kind of going backwards from this multiplication process. But let's use our box that we learned how to multiply with. And previously, we've seen that x times x becomes x squared. But in this case, I want it to become 2x squared. So what could I do to make it a 2x squared? Well, that's right. You could just put a 2 here. So 2x times x would then make this a 2x squared. So essentially what we're doing is we're creating a couple binomials here. And one of them has to be a 2x and the other one has to be an x. And that's the only possible way we could multiply and create that 2x squared. Now for the rest of this, we still have to find sets of numbers that multiply to a 14. So let's come up with the different possibilities. We have 1 and 14 or 2 and 7. And I'm going to start with this 1 and 14. So let's go ahead and put the 1 here. And we'll put the 14 here. And if I take 2x times 1, that would give me 2x. And if I take 14 times x, that gives us 14x. And if I combine these terms, we're trying to find the combination that adds up to an 11x. But unfortunately, 14x plus 2x, well, that makes 16x. That's not going to work. So now instead of 1 and 14 like that, I'm going to reverse it because now the order does matter. And we're going to put 14 here with a 1 there. And now let's see what happens. 2x times 14, that's a 28x. And 1 times x is just 1x. And if we add these, 1x plus 28x, well, shoot, it doesn't make an 11. So it's not going to be 1 and 14 or 14 and 1. So in this case, the order does matter. Previously, the order did not matter. Now it's going to start to matter. But we can eliminate that combination of 1 and 14. Let's go ahead and try 2 and 7. So I'm going to put a 2 here. And I'm going to put a 7 here. Now let's see what happens. 2x times 2. That's 4x. And 7 times x gives you 7x. And if you mult or add these together, 7x plus 4x, well, what do you know? It creates that 11x there. And you can check 7 times 2 is 14. So this is the combination that we're looking for because when you add those two middle terms together, it creates an 11x. So our final binomial in this case is going to be this one's 2x plus 7. And the other one is going to be x plus 2. And this is going to be our final factored answer. So it involves a little bit of guess and check. Uh, but eventually, after you do it enough, you kind of get the hang of it and you know which ones aren't going to work right away. Uh, one thing I'm going to show you right now, just to make it a little faster to explain later in the video, is when we are combining like terms, what we're doing is we're combining these, so that creates 7x, and we're combining these, so 2x times 2 is 4x. So the inside ones and the outside ones get multiplied and then combined. And when you add those together, it should make that middle term. So I'm going to use, I won't use the box to explain the rest of these. I'm going to use kind of the inside term and outside term just to make it go a little bit faster. All right, for the next one, we have 5x squared minus 22x minus 15. So hopefully you realize the only way that you could multiply to make a 5x squared is with 5x or and an x. 5 is a prime number, so there's only one set of numbers that you could use, 5 and 1. So we already have the 5x and x. 
Now let's look at the things that could possibly multiply to a 15, and that would be 1 and 15, or 3 and 5. 1 and 15, or 3 and 5. Let's go ahead and try the 1 and 15. So I'm going to put a 1 here, a 15 here. We'll deal with the signs later on. And again, like I just showed you previously, we're going to look at the inside terms. So 1 times x is 1x. And we're going to look at these outside terms. 5x times 15 is 75x. Now, is there any way you could take a 1x and 75x and have it add up to a negative 22? No, you can't. It can make a 76, it can make a 74, but it's not going to get to a 22. So it will not be 1 and 15. But the order matters, so let's reverse it. Let's go ahead and try 15 and 1 and see what happens. If we take a look at the inside terms, 15 times x is 15x. 5x times 1 is 5x. And if we add 15x and 5x, is there any combination that we could use to make a negative 22x? Unfortunately, not. So it will not be 15 and 1. So again, lots of guessing and checking. Eventually, intuition will kick in, and you won't have to guess and check nearly as much. Let's go ahead and erase those. So it's probably going to be 3 and 5. Let's go ahead and try out 3 and 5. I'll put a 3 here and a 5 here. And let's take a look at the inside term is 3x. The outside terms, well, that's a 25x. And is there any combination of 3x and 25x that could create a negative 22x? There is. If you put the minus here, if you take 25 minus 3, that's a positive 22. That won't work. But if you put the minus here, a 3x take away 25x, that creates the negative 22x. So now I just have to figure out where would that minus sign be in order to create a negative 25x? Would it go on this 3 or would it go on the 5? Well, it would go on the 5 because then you'd have 5x times negative 5 creates this minus 25x. And we put a plus here because a positive 3 times x becomes 3x. One nice thing about this is you can always double check your answers. And you could do the box method here. And you could write 5x plus 3 along the side and x minus 5 across the top. And you could multiply each of these out combine the like terms, and it should equal exactly what you started with. And in this case, it would. You'll just have to trust me. So go ahead and try the next two on your own. These two are going to be a little bit simpler just because these first numbers are prime numbers. The 3 is prime, and this 7 is prime. And after this, we're going to go down to one where it is not prime anymore. So go ahead and make sure you have a good grasp on these next two and then come on back for the last example. All right, we've got one more example to go through, and this one's going to be a little bit more difficult just because it involves a little bit more guess and check. So we're looking at this first number here, and it's a 12. So unfortunately, it's not just 1x and 12x that we could use to make a 12x squared. We could have 1 and 12. We could have... 2 and 6, or we could have 3 and 4. So there's a lot of different possibilities that we could have. Now with each of these, we've got lots of things that could multiply to 20. We've got 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. So there's a lot of different possibilities that we might have to guess and check. So sorry about that. Um, let's just kind of speed things up here. It's not going to be 1 and 12. So let's go ahead and try the next one, we're going to try 2 and 6. So we're going to put a 2x here, and we're going to put a 6x here. And now we're going to go through the list of 20s. So we have 1 and 20, we have 2 and 10, or we have 4 and 5. So let's go ahead and try 1 and 20. 1 and 20, 
This would make a 6x. And this would make a 40x. Could 6x and 40x make a negative 1x? Nope. So instead of 1 and 20, now we have to try the other way. We're going to try 20 and 1. This would give us 120. This would give us a 2. Could 120 and 2 make a negative 1? No. So it's not going to be 1 and 20. I'll cross that one off. Now let's try 2 and 10. I'm going to try a 2 here and a 10 here. This would become 12x and 2x times 10. This one would give you 20x. Could 12 and 20 make a negative 1? No. A uh, little trick here. 2 and 10 are both even, so when you multiply them, you will get other even numbers. And if you subtract or add two even numbers, it will continue to be an even number. So you can't add or subtract two even numbers to make this negative one. One is odd. So I'm going to spoil you again and say it's not going to be 2 and 10, even if I switch it around. So I'm going to erase this 2 and 10. And now let's try 4 and 5. Cross your fingers. Could be 4 or 5. Let's put a 4 here and a 5 here. 4 times 6x is 24x, and 2x times 5 is 10x. That's not going to work. Sorry. And let's switch it around. So instead of 4 and 5, let's try the other way. 5 and 4. So we have 30x, and we have 8x. Could 30x and 8x make a negative 1x? No. I can't. Uh, so we did all that work. We checked every possibility. And basically what we just found out was it's not going to be the 2 and 6. And now we have to repeat this entire process with 3 and 4. You could have used my same logic as earlier. These are both even numbers. 2 and 6 are even. There's no way it's going to add to an odd number there. So I could have spoiled that earlier, but I wanted to just frustrate you a little bit. So now let's go ahead and go to the last one. We're going to try that 3 and 4 out. So it could be a 3x and 4x. And again, our combinations for 20 are 1 and 20. It's 2 and 10, or it is 4 and 5. Now I've already told you it can't be even even. Uh, you can try it if you want. It's not going to work. Let's try this 1 and 20. If you put a 1 here and a 20 there, this would be 4x, and this would be 60x, and unfortunately, 4 and 60 don't make a 1. Let's reverse it. Hopefully, in your mind, you're telling me, Mr. Jansen, this is a waste of time because this makes 80x, and that makes 3x, and that's certainly not going to work. So let's go ahead and try one more possibility. We know 1 and 20 don't work. We're going to try this 4 and 5. So let's try 4 here and 5 here. If I multiply these inside ones, 4 times 4x, that's 16x. If I multiply the outsides, 3x times 5 is 15x. Could these somehow make a negative 1x? Yes, they could. If you put the negative on the 16x, if you combine negative 16x plus 15x, it equals negative 1x. So now where does that minus sign have to go? On this 4 or on this 5? It would go on the 4, a minus 4 with a plus 5. Negative 4 times 4x would give you the minus 16x. And 3x times positive 5 gives you the 15x. So I know it's kind of frustrating, but after you do a couple of these, you kind of start to get the hang of it and you realize which combinations aren't going to work out. But that's your final factored answer. There is one more for you to do and practice on your own. Uh, good luck with that one and good luck with the extra credit on the test. Thanks for watching.